Welcome to Seed 11A. Today, we are pleased to host Michael Schneiders, CFO of Brain Biotech AG, to review the company's 9M twice e 24 25 results. Brain Biotech is a prominent European leader in biotech solutions, specializing in enzymes, microbiomes, and natural bioactive compounds. In this session, Michael will present the financial performance, key developments, and future prospects. Michael, the stage is yours. Hello, my name is Michael Schneiders. I'm the CFO of Brain Biotech AG in Germany. Before I jump now into the 9N figures, let me allude you a bit on what Brain Biotech is all about. Brain Biotech is an industrial biotech company which tries to solve some of the world's greatest challenges for industrial production. For example, we save a lot of energy by going biological in our production way and replacing existing chemical processes because our processes are done at significantly lower pressures and also at significantly lower temperatures. We're trying to help to avoid more livestock farming, but for example, looking at alternative protein production, for example, for vegan food, but also do things like the milk without the cow, i.e. livestock farming prevention in the first place. We're looking at things at food security with our natural antioxidants and antimicrobials. And all this to do in the company really helps to protect the planetary boundaries for good. Let me remind you about the buildup of the group. Essentially, we have two strong pillars. On the left-hand side, the brain biocatalyst segment. Here about 48 million of revenues, 5 million of positive EBITDA, and a strong R&D ratio of around 5%. Within that segment, we mainly produce products on the enzyme side. We also have services to produce the microbial strains for the enzyme production. And also we develop food ingredients here on behalf of our customers. On the right-hand side, our brain bio incubator. Here we actually look at great few products and uh, participations with partners, bring highly innovative products to the market, mainly in the areas of food, but also some pharma projects and some environmental projects we do here. So how do we do it? Well, we take nature as our best example. We're looking for proteins and enzymes in nature. Once we have found them, we actually try to produce them as so-called biofactories. Biofacturing is actually a microbial strain, a production based on microbial strains, i.e. we're looking for microbial strains, for example, yeast or fungi or bacillus strains, express then essentially these enzymes in the microbial strain, develop a strain to perfection, so we actually get the yields we need for industrial production, bring it into the steel fermenters in the bioprocess, and finally produce it, our large site in Cardiff, where we can produce up to 10 cubic meters, If we need higher productions than that, we also have external partners that we can produce significantly higher, up to 100 cubic meters and even higher if we need to. We also have own formulation and blending know-how and the sales and distribution organizations to directly target our customers. So what's our go-to-market approach? We have three business models which share essentially one technology platform. First of all, our products business, mainly enzymes. Here we cater particularly to the food industry, in segments such as dairy, egg baking, fruit juice, of also line of production, for example. We also have our custom research organization, the CRO business. Here we're actually looking at targeting customers with tailor-made solutions to solve their biological problems for industrial production. And last but not least, the CDM or CMO business, the contract development manufacturing organization. Here we're actually producing products for our partners in our fermented businesses. And as said, One shared technology platform unites these three go-to-market approaches. A little bit on our markets. So in total, the global enzyme market is about 6 billion of sales. We're of about 2 billion of sales, our addressable market, mainly in the areas of food and life sciences. We do see quite some strong growth in the baking segment, particularly for us in the next years, and also the life sciences segment and the dairy segments. And already today, we hold strong market positions in baking, dairy, and to a certain extent, also fruit juice and wine production. Let me now jump to our 9M figures. I'd like you to go home with four key messages. First of all, we had a very strong growth in our core segment, brain biocatalysts, of 8%, 8.1% year on year in the quarter. Secondly, our brain bio incubator business had two very strong successes. First of all, our partner program, the Fabaris, 
essentially here on the pharmaceutical side is running extremely well and more to that in a minute. And secondly, we have partnered successfully Prolict Active, one of our natural antimicrobials with a partner called Corbium. Again, some more details in the next slides. Briartec was the last minority stake uh, we still had uh, in the books in our industrial business. We successfully purchased that minority stake for 1.4 million and realized a nice book game with it. And last but not least, the company still holds a quite strong cash position above 10 million at the Dynam stake. A bit more detail, essentially, on the brand by incubator successes. We've partnered now probably Active, which essentially is a natural antimicrobial derived from the peel of the orange skin with Corbium. Corbium, almost a dream partner for us, Amsterdam-based company in Netherlands, with about 1.3 billion of revenues, particularly strong in the area of sustainable natural ingredients. We have done a so-called TMS Plus deal here, i.e. we will advise them still in our contact research organization, essentially on the future path of that program. And once that product comes then to market, you would also get some royalties on that sense. Secondly, and very important for the company, the project with Favaris is in a very good stage right now. Favaris themselves, Nistetikon Blastek, essentially has announced that one of the key products, uh, the on-demand treatment for so-called hereditary angioedema, AAE, we will release now uh, the scientific data about one quarter earlier than originally thought, so very well running program. And secondly, also um, that they have been able to uh, uh, to to do a very large secondary placement in the market, getting finance in north of two hundred million US dollars to finance fully their program through until market launch. Very strong statements here also on behalf of Brain, because essentially Brain will collect additional regulatory milestones of up to 27 million euros until market launch of a product. And with the positive news, essentially from Favaris, that becomes very much more likely we actually harvest these milestones. A bit deeper dive into the numbers, you can see here in the circle, good growth as said before on the core segment Brain by a Catalyst, a bit more muted growth on the overall group mainly driven here by the negative performance of a segment brain by incubator. Two major effects here. On the one hand, we had 1.5 million milestone last year, which by the nature of milestones being digital from year to year could not be repeated. But also secondly, our daughter company, Amuticon Discovery, which is a contact research organization, particularly in the pharmaceutical space, had essentially quite low order intake. You see some improvements going into next year, but also the fourth quarter of this year will be roughly slowing growth on that one bringing down the overall growth expectations of the group. If you look at EBDA, actually strong contribution here from Brain Biocatalyst, our strong segment year on year. Uh, the Brain Incubator more or less on the same level of last year. And despite the strongly falling sales and not harvesting the 1.5 million milestone, essentially more or less on the level of last year, it is due to very strong cost cutting in this segment and the measures we have been taking essentially protect FDA. Let me come now to our guidance uh, on the quantitative guidance for this year. We're still looking at the core segment brain biocatalyst at around revenues of last year with an FDA margin around 10%. For brain bio incubator, we're now forecasting lower sales than last year, around the 5 million level and the loss around 1 million due to R&D and investments. The midterm guidance remains unshaped. So why should you think about investing into brain? Well, first of all, we have embarked on a clear strategy of profitable growth in our specialist enzyme segments, so the brain biocatalyst core segment. Secondly, we have a large growing and very attractive addressable market, about 2 billion in size. We have 50 million revenues today, so plenty of space to grow for us in terms of market share. Plus, the underlying market still keeps growing at around 5%. There's clearly a growing demand for natural solutions around the globe. Might it be for environmental reasons or might it be for consumer reasons? As shown before, we have successfully commercialized many of the brain by better products. So, for example, now the virus program running very nicely, but also been in partnership with Corbion. I think it's a strong testimonial of that. And last but not least, most of our products and solutions directly address many of the UN sustainability development goods. Our next events are essentially the general reporting of our full year report and the end report. We will have quarterly numbers in February of next year. And then please be invited to our annual general meeting on March 11th. 
Really for the questions, please contact me directly or Martina Schuster's Investor Relations. And thank you very much for your attention. Disclaimer. As described in the legal section on our website, c11a.com, this publication is for informational purposes only. This means it is not intended to provide you with any investment advice. Any opinion or recommendation expressed by the companies is neither given nor supported by us and should not be considered investment advice from our side. Also, remember that any opinion or recommendation expressed is subject to change without further notice. The content is obtained from sources believed to be reliable, but we do not guarantee its accuracy, completeness, or timeliness. Seed11a.com and its employees disclaim all liability for any loss that may arise in any form from any use of the information in the video, audio, and on our website. We neither express any opinion on the future value of any security or other investment vehicle, nor recommend any investment based on the information provided. Please consider the publications and our website as a platform for companies to present themselves. You need to seek financial advice from an expert regarding the accuracy and appropriateness of the material presented or recommended by the companies in the publication. As we are just considered a publisher, we may hold and trade securities in the presenting company, whether it is a listed or private company. By consuming our content, you agree to these terms and the terms in our legal section on our website.